Good evening and welcome to another 30-minute barrage of uneducated guesswork. In the news this week, joy at Westminster as Colin Moynihan finally ties the knot. <laughs> uh, complaints that his Royal Jaguar pollutes the environment. Prince Charles is accused of overreacting to the criticism. <laughs> and Paddy Ashdown's celebrated affair pales into insignificance beside rumours of a new love in Mrs Thatcher's life. <laughs> Very unfair, that's her son. <laughs> <laughs> On Ian Hislop's team this week, uh, someone who I'm sure is causing all our viewers to point at their screens and say, I bet he drinks, just I bet he drinks, Steve Frost. <laughs> And with Paul Merton this week, a journalist and author whose books include Gentlemen Prefer My Sister. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, her sister wasn't available tonight, so instead, will you welcome Stephanie Kalman. <laughs> and so with one bound, we find ourselves amid the turmoil that uh, is round one. A piece of news footage for each of our distinguished funsters to recognise and explain. Ian and Steve, what on earth is all this? George Bush. Yeah. That's Ross Perot. <laughs> Sting. Yeah. That's what we had for dinner before we came on. That's John Simpson. All, all I know is that John Simpson went into the jungle to f interview a rare tribe about the summit, and they gave him uh, that pot of vicious drugs there, and he mm. couldn't see for a day. <laughs> he actually had hallucinations. Yeah. I think he imagined that people were going to do something at the summit. <laughs> and he brought one of his hallucinations back with him. That's a little thing walking around, you know. You oh, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. thought that was the pea that was too big to get into the packet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember? I used to feel sorry for him, Mr. Cannonball P. Yeah. You never get him with his mates. <laughs> He's now roaming the streets as a male prostitute in Rio. <laughs> what it's about. Yeah. It's incredible, yes, he lives in a world on his own. Um, <laughs> a BBC reporter, John Simpson, suffered hallucinations after tasting an Amazonian witch doctor's drug cocktail. Uh, for one crazy moment, he thought a tree was the ancient gate of Babylon, his pen after of crimson light, and that Martin Lewis was well worth six-figure salary. <laughs> uh, Paul and Stephanie, one of those stories that you may have uh, not quite noticed this week. Oh, well, who's that? Wait a minute. Oh, um. <laughs> um, uh, oh dear. That is the world's first successful Oi, Wiggy. Birth... She just said, Oi, Wiggy. So what did you say? <laughs> See that? <laughs> you play that back. She just went, Oi, Wiggy. <laughs> and he turned around. So what was that? That woman was actually the donor of the world's first successful uh, pubic hair transplant. Which <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit odd, really, isn't it? Sort of like reporting on this sort of breakdown, allegedly breakdown of this marriage when they've contributed something towards it. It's like sort of... One of the papers shooting a pigeon in Trafalgar Square, taking a photograph of it and saying, how could this happen in London? <laughs> <laughs> well, the story so first broke in, in the Sunday Times, um, which is odd, because you'd think a newspaper would have got hold of it. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> Uh, yes, it is the continuing saga of, uh, of Charles, Diana and that book, which is being serialised ad nauseam by the Sunday Times and other Murdoch papers. Uh, editor Andrew Neil was so shocked at Prince Charles' low moral standards that he almost fell out of Pamela Bordes's bed. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, of course, uh, is accused of a dad Camilla Parker Bowles. They apparently call each other by pet names Fred and Gladys. All a bit raunchy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they exchanged bracelets and flowers in those names, but it was the Fred and Gladys sunstrip on the Royal Jaguar that did it. <laughs> Camilla, uh, Camilla is in fact the wife of Brigadier Andrew Parker Bowles, uh, who holds the honorary position of Silver Stick in Waiting to the Queen. His privileged job it is to furbish Her ma Majesty in moments of heightened crisis with a silver stick something I'm sure we can all relate to. <laughs> uh, Ian and Steve, some happy memories for you. Well, apparently their relationship's breaking up. I don't know if that's a major scoop. Not happy, are they? Oh, nor are they. Look. <laughs> read the body language. Oh, oh. Oh. It's the Nuremberg Trials. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Great film. All these duff old right-wingers have been thrown out of the House of Commons, put in the House of Lords, in the hope they won't cause any trouble up there, led by the duffest old right-winger of all, Mrs Thatcher. 
Yes. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> Later on Newsnight. <laughs> Mrs Thatcher turned down a hereditary peerage on the uh, perfectly reasonable ground, grounds that for Mark Thatcher to be Earl of Finchley presupposed he could find the place. <laughs> Mrs Thatcher will uh, probably now be elevated to Baroness, which will no doubt make Dennis Baron, although with all that drink inside him, he's probably halfway there already. <laughs> Paul and Stephanie, no secrets here. Um, oh, this is the ideal luggage exhibition, isn't it? Uh, uh, funny handshake clubs. Yeah, this um, is the um, this is West Merseyside uh, police. <laughs> <laughs> Take two bottles into the shower. This is what, this just goes to show. The... <laughs> Angus, are you going to ask me why I'm wearing a suit tonight? <laughs> um, I was, but later on. Oh, all right. <laughs> Seems late enough. Why it are you wearing um... a suit? <laughs> I thought I'd take the piss out of you. <laughs> no. No, actually, it's quite... I had to make a court appearance earlier today. It's something to do with Jason Donovan. I can't go into it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh... It was, um, in this day. And Bank managers who are pleased to be the first knight of the Order of Kadosh in the temple. Hello, Mr. Furness. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing it's pathetic, isn't that. it? <laughs> there's a lot of rubbish about how ridiculous the Freemasons are, and there's really nothing silly about it at all, said the Grand Electric Lettuce of the Marzipan Lodge. <laughs> <laughs> Journalists were uh, shown the Masons' uh, historic guide, which revealed that uh, one need only pronounce the word Freemasonry in a public place to see heads twitch and faces swivel attentively. <laughs> I'm not sure I've ever seen a face swivel attentively. <laughs> Sounds like something out of The Exorcist. Uh, the Mason... I suppose Robert Calvey's face twitched attentively when it whipped round under Blackfriars Bridge when he was weighed down with the bricks, did <laughs> yes. it? Yes. Good point. I was waiting no, for somebody to say that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, he probably killed himself, didn't he? Jumped under the bridge, got the rope up, bricks in the pocket, <laughs> tied washing up to here, trowels in his stomach. Mm. <laughs> did, he, did he have trowels in his stomach? No, I made that bit up. Oh. <laughs> All of which uh, ritual buffoonery brings us deftly to the end of this round, and I'm bound to tell you that, uh, well, both teams would appear to have accrued maximum points, as Ian and Steve and Paul and Stephanie have a buoyant four. Seconds away from round two, but before all that nonsense, all this nonsense, a couple of curious tableau. Ian and Steve, this is yours. <laughs> Paul, uh, Paul and Stephanie <laughs> and uh, between now and later your collective task is to come up with a thought or two about what they might be saying to each other or a caption is another way of putting it in the meantime uh, let's don the rubber galoshes and slip into the murky slime of tabloid journalism one headline each Paul laugh I nearly suffered a major affective psychiatric disorder it's a good catchphrase isn't it <laughs> Laugh. Is this when Albert Einstein was working as a stand-up comic? <laughs> he, it was his catchphrase, but it turned out to be laugh, and he suffered a major affective psychiatric disorder. <laughs> was this theory of relativity never... walks into a pub? <laughs> <laughs> this is the title of the game show you're going to be doing in that suit. Yes. Mm. No, I'm doing a game show called Kiss My Aunt. <laughs> <laughs> laugh, I nearly suffered a major affective psychiatric disorder. Is this the uh, psychiatrist in Liverpool that said, if you looked at... Um, state of happiness, um, you could class classify it as a sort of psychological disorder because it's quite a rare state and that it's just a moral value that people put on depression. No. <laughs> oh, well, I'm afraid it is, Ian, sorry. No, but, uh, he's got two full points. Yes, it is Dr Richard Bentle, a psychologist at Liverpool University, who proposes that happiness should in future be classified as major affective psychiatric disorder pleasant type. And uh, <laughs> the only sane people are those depressed enough to think their friends are talking about them behind their back. Because according to the doctor, your friends invariably are talking about <laughs> you behind your back. Which I think uh, his friends are anyway. What about Lady Dice? God. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, uh, can't stop thinking about her, can you? No. Doctor, in his... <laughs> I think Ian's the other man. <laughs> Uh, after years of experimental study, Dr. Bentle eventually concluded that there is clinical evidence of a link between happiness and bodily indulgence. I could have told him that when I was 16. <laughs> the <laughs> professor's findings... What were you doing when you were 16? You wouldn't like to know, Paul. It was hideous to even consider. <laughs> the, uh, the professor's... <laughs> 
but, but Did it involve it. farmyard animals? <laughs> I think we've got the makings of another game show here. I know. <laughs> Kiss my you. <laughs> That's well, my ram. <laughs> Well, Whose buffalo is it anyway? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stephanie, brace yourself for a dummy run with Albert, my silent knight. No idea. That's a is shame. This Anyone the, else? Is this the inflatable doll that you can buy that's a man and you feel a sort of woman driving out alone, you can put this inflatable doll next to you and, uh, and um, convince sort of people that you're not alone, you're actually sitting in the front of your car <laughs> with an inflatable doll. <laughs> I've got Albert. one of those, it's called a... Boyfriend. Mm. <laughs> you have to it, blow them up, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a nozzle. You have to, you have to blow into the nozzle. It's absolutely true. It's uh, Albert, an inflatable passenger, are designed to ward off the attentions of strange men. Apparently, perverts have taken to climbing into the vacant passenger seats of cars beside the driver. Of course, if they're that perverted, sitting on top of a dummy would be a bit of a bonus. <laughs> You'd have thought the dummy would have been modelled on Mike Tyson or Frank Bruno, but... It looks as if the makers decided that passing nutters would be most terrified by the notion of getting into a car with Bamba Gascoigne. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve, a murder mystery for you. Killer at Commons. Is it something to do with flu? Or, uh, <laughs> You're guessing here. Oh, I'm guessing. What about... The, the... It's the nickname of John Selwyn Gummer. Killer. Because <laughs> he's so effective as a politician. Mm. Is it the bloke who's a hitman? It is. In America, who's been employed in the kitchens at the house. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need oh, blowing up, uh, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah. well, yeah. While we're waiting for uh, Paul's next word, here's some incidental music. <laughs> it is uh, all about the drug-running international criminal who uh, mysteriously enough managed to merge seamlessly into the House of Commons. Uh, working there as a waiter, he turned out to be a hitman wanted uh, for several murders across the world, a drug dealer wanted for smuggling crack and cocaine, an HIV and an illegal immigrant travelling on a forged passport. But apart from that, his credentials were impeccable. <laughs> and, uh, and finally, in this round, Ian, a bit of a dog's breakfast for you. Um, I think this is the Breakfast TV Franchise Award. It's Paulie Yates, Bob Geldof, some man from somewhere else. Yes, it is the new Channel 4 breakfast. It's obviously caused a huge wave of interest here. <laughs> <laughs> now, I suppose Bob Geldof on in the morning will make you feel better, because you don't look as bad as him, no matter how bad. <laughs> All of which drags us screaming to the end of this round, and it's plain as day that uh, Ian and Steve have a winsome six, and Paul and Stephanie have a dashing ten. Now stand aside for the arrival of our stately archive round, two crumbling pieces of filmic history in which to wallow, the first depicting an old favourite, with the emphasis very much on the old, and the accompanying question, Ian and Steve, is as ever, what happened next? Mr Thatcher, how's the campaign going? That bloke says, how's the campaign going? And Dennis Thatcher says, uh, champagne, I haven't had any champagne. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... Is this where he suddenly goes like that and refuses to talk and just sort of back walks backwards? And just sort of does that. And... Well, um... Let... So, can I do it again? Yeah, it, do, it do, does, do, does that. <laughs> That's one of my new catchphrases I'm mm. going to be doing yeah. on, um, That's my sheep or whatever. <laughs> Let's see if, uh, if indeed he does do. Mr Thatcher, how's the campaign going? How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Paul and Stephanie, cast your mind back even further and likewise tell us what happened next. I hope that people on both sides of this argument may begin to realise what, what is involved in mindless extremism. I think someone threw David Owen at him. Well, on the side, Jimmy Edwards and um, Shirley Williams having a terrific time. He's turning to it. He's losing them. He's losing them. Yeah. Right down, Gag. She's yeah. right down. Okay. Pass him that one. Wait, do, wait. do the one about the Scotsman. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see if you were faintly close. What is involved in mindless extremism? <laughs> <laughs> He's 
doing that. Look, he's doing that. <laughs> it's, um, it's a couple of pounds of flour there, colliding with a couple of pounds of lard. As, uh, as then the Home Secretary, Roy Jenkins, was hit by a flour bomb. It would have been Roy Hattersley. He'd have caught it and eaten it. <laughs> <laughs> this, was, uh, this was at a Labour rally in 1975, before Jenkins and the gang broke the mould of British politics and then painstakingly put it back together again exactly as they found it. <laughs> the lovely Woy uh, always thought of himself as the highest ranking of the four but was never able to say so. <laughs> somewhat, uh, somewhat understandably. So uh, at the end of that regurgitated round the story so far is that uh, Ian and Steve have a less than perfect six and Paul and Stephanie have a superb... <laughs> So we goose-step daintily into our odd one out round, four visions of loveliness, which one isn't quite as gorgeous as the others. Stephanie, here's your wild bunch. Bill Wyman, bungalow Bill Wiggins, <laughs> Jerry Lee Lewis, and Roman Polanski. Good grief. Well, I think that Bill Wyman, Jerry Lee Lewis, and Roman Polanski all like their women very, very small, whereas Bill Wiggins likes them much, much bigger. Although size isn't important. No. We're talking age here. Yeah. We're talking age. Talking age. Mm. These aforementioned three, Bill, Jerry and Roman, um, like the age of their uh, lovers to be divisible into their own age by about... <laughs> <laughs> Why is he called Bungalow Bill? I asked him that once. Why are you asking Paul? <laughs> no, I was asking Stephanie. I thought he said it's because I've got quite a bit down below and nothing at all on top. Mm. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll bow to your knowledge. He's cerebral. <laughs> Surely, surely he should be called Tower Block, then. No, he's, uh, he's a bit well, cerebrally challenged, is um, Paul Bungalow Bill. He's right. not challenged. He's cerebrally challenged. Cerebrally challenged. Mm. Dick's pig shit. <laughs> That's a good title for a quiz show. Yeah. <laughs> it's that uh, all of them have admitted to having had sex with an underage woman, except Bungalow Bill Wiggins, who went out with Joan Collins. The only thing she's underage for is receiving a telegram from the Queen. And uh, Bill Wyman ditched Mandy Smith when she was 20, worried that she might be turning into a bit of a mother figure. But Mandy now goes out with Spurs defender Pat Vanden Howe, so anyone who fancies <laughs> have to get past him. Still most wingers in the country manage it. <laughs> Still, uh, uh, Steve, four uh, style gurus for you. David Steele, yeah. Kevin Keegan, Tony Blackburn, and the lovely Rolf Harris. <laughs> Um, this is a double you've got here because you've actually got the photograph of the three blokes that beat Kevin Keegan up with baseball bats. <laughs> and the, the real answer, to get some points here, mm. there's no point joking, you've got to go play this seriously. I think um, they've, all been, they've, all, they've, all got, they've all been awarded something by the Queen or whatever, and Keegan, Harris and uh, Blackburn have got CBEs, but David Steele is a sir. No, we're uh, you're barking it's not slightly up the again, wrong it? tree. It's more of a music question. If I'm going to uh, Rolf Harris sang two little boys, and none of the others did. <laughs> two points. <laughs> well, be thankful for that, anyway. Oh, well, Ke Keegan made a red, red yeah. record, and yeah. David Steele made a record, and Tony Blackburn made a record, and Rolf Harris made a record. So none of them are the odd man out. <laughs> it's, uh, it's David Steele, as they've all released singles, but only his failed to make the top forty. But then uh, David Steele and success go together like peaches and creosote. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the record was, uh, was called I Feel Liberal All Right, and we can sadly remind ourselves of it now. You can help me to change the face of British politics. Let's pull our country together instead of tearing it apart. That's what the Liberal Alliance is all about. Strange it never made it, really, isn't it? <laughs> Kevin Keegan had a hit in 1979 with Head Over Heels in Love, no doubt a balance problem by perming fluids soaking into the brain. <laughs> and Tony Blackburn was also a bit of a pop star, a bit being the operative word. Amongst his attempts to stardom was this. It's a man called Woodrow all alone. You can hear the woodchops cry. He swings his axe all day and chops the trees away. Yeah, yeah. Chop, chop, chop. <laughs> and uh, finally in this round, Ian. Four cultural icons for you. Douglas Hurd. Yes. Rupert Allison. Salman Rushdie. Yep. And Claire Rayner. Well, this is a, a book question. Um, Douglas Hurd used to write thrillers. Difficult to believe, isn't it? 
if you've read the Maastricht Treaty in detail. <laughs> Rupert Allison is also known as Nigel West, and he writes um, non-fiction books. Um, Claire Rayner advertises wings. <laughs> I'm wearing mine now, because I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> they all write fiction except Rupert Allison, um, Nigel That's West. Um, it's, it's almost right. You're quite so far behind. I'll give you a couple of points. Uh, the answer is that they're all part-time novelists, apart from Salman Rushdie, who's a full-time novelist and a part-time member of the human race. So I'll uh, quibble with that, because I'm not sure that Claire Rayner is a full-time anything else. I mean, doing an ad for five minutes once a week, because you probably know Angus doesn't take up much time and you get very well paid. <laughs> <laughs> All of which, uh, stuff and nonsense brings us to the final death throes of this round, and the main worry, for them at least, is uh, that Ian and Steve have a potential disastrous eight, and Paul and <laughs> Stephanie have a tremendously promising 16. And so, all hail our final missing words round. Two sets of balmy headlines each in the time-honoured tradition of pornographic photographs with a strategically placed black square. Which word or words does it conceal, is what we ask. He who lies last tries first. So, uh, Ian and Steve, that very much means you, I think. Uh, eyes down, look in. Libyans admit they supported what? Uh, Chelsea. <laughs> That's the IRA, surely. Mrs. Thatcher. It is no, the IRA. IRA, very good. Next, uh, Bush and Major agree to what in Rio? Do nothing. <laughs> is it live sex on stage? <laughs> or differ, it's really? Differ. It, it, it yeah. is, but you have to say it before me. Next, uh, <laughs> Freddie Starr keeps what? Freddie Starr keeps turning up at my house, actually. Does he? Yeah, it just does. I don't know why. But, uh... <laughs> is it li license? Uh, it is licence. Well done. Next, Diana turns to what? Andrew Morton. Because you do, for comfort. Uh. <laughs> you turn to the second string hack on the Daily Star. You always do. I know this one because we need the points. Yes. Wills. It's, it's, uh, no, it's Diana to avoid steps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, to sons. Her sons is very good. Yeah. And lastly, Charles secretly shops for what? It's for Andrew Morton, because they're all such good friends. <laughs> he does Andrew Morton's shopping. They're that close. <laughs> Frocks is, in fact, the answer. So, uh, Paul and Stephanie, here's your lot. Uh, Delore warns Major, hands off my what? Compact Sh disc player. <laughs> Almost. Treaty is Treaty. the answer. Mm. Uh, next, cucumber farmers seek what? Durex sponsorship. <laughs> a nice New idea. deal. Nuns for old jokes. Subsidies. <laughs> Nuns for old jokes. Uh, compensation is the answer that you weren't oh. going to get. Next, uh, be nice to who? Clark tells cops. Dead suspects' relatives. <laughs> <laughs> It's satirical. Well, it's a thought, isn't it? No Motorists. more specific it's than that. Very good. Yeah. You can have two points for that. Oh. Drivers is, in fact, the answer. Yeah. Oh, uh, good. Next, Queen caught up in what? Parachute. <laughs> She's in France, isn't she, at the moment? Or With it? Andrew Morton. They're mates. You see, they get the dance together. No. Uh, Maastricht Brow is a rather disappointing answer after all that. And Certainly finally, is. Major opens what in South America? Gob. Is it bowels? <laughs> bowels. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Bowles? Is it? Well, he probably has done, but that's, uh, that's not actually the answer to the question, no. Um, oh. W.H. Smith's branch? <laughs> New Era is, in fact, uh, oh. what the answer was. All of which uh, hopeless floundering brings us stuttering <laughs> to this end of an era. And the answer all is that this week's cool cats are Paul and Stephanie with 18, and this week's dead dogs are Ian and Steve with 14. <laughs> So, a cluster of diamonds to our winners, a lump of anthracite to our losers. <laughs> but uh, let's not forget our caption competition, try as we might. Ian and Steve, what do you think of for this? Uh, he's, he's, uh, what I don't know is that I've just pissed into this glass and drank it. <laughs> <laughs> it's his new show, Beatles About to Fall Over. <laughs> <laughs> or Beatles About Eight Pints Up, or... <laughs> Oh, You've it? been drinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Paul and Stephanie, what about yours? Branson Models' new novelty condom. <laughs> Usually it's it me who own. takes other people for a ride. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Mm, yes. Branson uh, privatises Grand National. <laughs> Richard you. Branson gets on a merry-go-round. <laughs> An inspired caption, Paul, thank you. <laughs> on which brilliant note we say uh, thank you to our guests, Ian Hislop and Steve Frost, Paul Merton and Stephanie Kalman. And I leave you with news that in the run-up to Wimbledon, tennis stars are accused of demanding too much as Pat Cash asks ball girls to dental floss his armpits. <laughs> There are complaints about the catering at the Rio summit after a batch of pancakes is found to be badly overcooked. <laughs> and finally, in the Caribbean, at the 35th attempt, Simon Le Bon finally manages to moor his yacht. <laughs> Good night. Take a look at the giant anteaters, armadillos, maned wolves and jaguars that inhabit the Great Plains of South America. Next here on UKTV Documentary.